think a lot of us um, globally, people who are working around issues of sexuality, have felt that um, we need to be able to speak about economic issues, about questions of political economy, um, both in in terms of their their descriptive value, uh, you know, kind of how do people of different sexualities do things like survive, get housing, um, get jobs, the, the material conditions of people's lives with respect to their sexualities. But I think um, that we're also trying to think about what um, a, the discourse on political economy can do for critiques of sexuality in a kind of theoretical, historical, um, other kinds of analytic ways. Um, so uh, one thing that I, I think anthropologists and particularly ethnographers can do is think about what the law looks and feels like in everyday life for people, particularly people who don't have a lot of economic or political or social power. So uh, what I, uh, one of the things that I, I was able to show is that the law says one thing on paper, but in everyday life, um, what the law often ends up doing is facilitating uh, an extra legal space where um, police and uh, local um, shopkeepers and people passing by on the street and sex workers um, operate. And they operate through a series of very careful and minute and um, conscious negotiations with one another. So the law sort of, pr if it does something, I think it makes a space and then people behave within that space that may not necessarily be commensurate with what the law says. I'm very interested in um, conversations around uh, materiality, political economy, class, and temporality. And, um, you know, this kind of a very old discussion that anthropologists have been having about progress and modernity and um, time, really. Um, you know, because anthropology has been so much formed around the question of who is more primitive than whom, who is the proper subject of anthropological discussion. And, you know, of course, anthropologists have done a lot of work to, you know, to problematize all of those kinds of categories. So I think very early on, the discipline had to grapple with questions of, of time, of you know, who do we consider to be advanced? Who do we consider not to be advanced? What is the relationship between these groups of people? So today I'm gonna draw on that and frame um, our panel in part in terms of that question. Um, in my own uh, research and other kinds of engagements in India, something I've noticed is that um, sex work is, is being talked about as a vestige of the past, particularly when it's conflated with trafficking. So part of the rationale for eradicating sex work has been to say, uh, from and this is coming from policymakers both within and outside of India, certain media um, representations have done this as well, has been to say that uh, a, a modern society has no place for this practice. At the same time, there is a new visibility that LGBTQ folks are enjoying and a particular segment of LGBTQ populations. Um, and now we have a kind of global uh, human rights discourse which is really framing gay rights as the future, as a kind of a sign of progress and a sign of, you know, a, a kind of the membership uh, that one has to the community of nations now includes embracing gay rights. So there's a funny tension, I think, between seeing gay rights as the future and sex work as the past. Um, I obviously think it need not be that way, and in everyday life it certainly doesn't work that way, but there's a a discourse, and by that I mean a kind of productive conversation that's happening around these things that I think can help us to think more deeply and, and more clearly about what's going on around sexuality.